Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And since it's Women's History Month, I'm here today to talk to you about Mighty Morphin Power Ranger Season 2, Episode 16, Beauty and the Beast. So I thought to myself, okay, it's Women's History Month. How can I not talk about the OG Pink Ranger from Power Rangers history, Kimberly? It would be criminal not to. And so I started thinking to myself, which like Kimberly episode is a good one? So I'm just like, hmm, she has a couple of solo episodes. There's the one where she's supposed to like, you know, has like a new pink dress and it gets ruined, it gets rained on and she having a bad day, but that's not really a huge highlight I wanna highlight. Um, and then of course there's the one in season three where she goes back in time with the West, um, the Wild Wild West and the Western Rangers and stuff like that. I'm just kind of like, yeah, that was cool. She went back in time and, you know, like hope Zordon don't find like, you know, Rangers to help her out. But I don't know. It just felt like she wasn't like the main true focus because, you know, she wasn't really the one kicking a lot of butt. And mostly when she had to fight Goldar, she was just doing a bunch of flips and getting out of the way. And I was like, okay, so what's a really interesting episode? And then I stopped and I thought about it. The one where she was supposed to marry Lord Zed and she pretended to be Rita. That was a pretty hilarious episode. And it was a pretty cool episode. And it was also a very confusing episode because of what was going on behind the scenes. And so I thought to myself, you know, because she is the female ranger, she's not really going to best any of the villains and stuff like that. So regardless of whatever episode I pick, it, you know, at least I can pick like one that like she was really hilarious in and stuff. And everybody loved themselves on Kimberly. She was the ultimate valley girl and stuff. And, you know, Amy Jo Johnson did an amazing job portraying her. And I remember I was so devastated when she left in season three. And but then we got Kat and Kat was cool. And, you know, it was still, it was just sad to see her. God, I was, oh my God, I was devastated. <laughs> I was devastated. <laughs> And it's sad that the fandom has now turned on Amy Jo Johnson only because she won't appear in the 30th special of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers once and always. And her reason for not doing it is simple. Hasbro just isn't paying enough because it costs a lot of money to fly to New Zealand, get a hotel, um, buy food, then fly on back and everything, you know? And that ain't cheap. That's a lot of money to spend. And she has a family to think about because she lives in Canada now and stuff. And she has, and you know, she has other stuff she's doing. So just to pick up her stuff and leave for like nickels and dimes just isn't enough, you know? And sadly, the fandom has turned on her. I don't understand fandoms nowadays. It's like y'all hear one thing y'all don't like and then y'all just turn on people. Whether it's Star Trek, Star Wars, The Walking Dead, it is people go like crazy. And it's like, if you are gonna turn on celebrity, make sure you actually have a valid reason. Like Austin St. John, he's not gonna be in a special because he can't legally go to another country because he broke the freaking law and everything. But yet people are kissing his butt and everything. Like I read comment after comments talking about, I don't care what he did, he's my hero and stuff like that. And if this is true, because there hasn't been no updates on the reports of after he got arrested for money fraud and everything, if it's true, he stole money from the government. And I have literally read a comment one day saying like, I wish I could take his place in prison so he won't have to suffer. Fool, are you crazy? Do you seriously think this man cares about you enough <laughs> that you would do something like that? A celebrity just wants your money and your fan worship. It don't matter what celebrity it is. It don't matter if they're nice, they're mean. They just want money and they want the fan worship. Sure, they love their fans because their fans give them money. <laughs> and so I'm just kind of like, people are willing to kiss his butt, but then turn on the female and everything who has not done anything. And Amy Joan Johnson literally has never done anything. So I don't understand that logic, but I digress. And so like in this episode, 
we get Lord Zed and his most like, you know, season two when he's the most evil and cunning and scared to piss out little kids and stuff like that before they goofed him up in season three. And I love Lord Zed to death. He has a great design. He had a cool voice and everything. May the actor rest in peace, who um, was the voice actor and stuff. And so like... He feels like it's time for him to have a bride and everything, you know, somebody to help him rule the cosmos and stuff because he got rid of Rita in the beginning of season two. And so Kim, he wants Kimberly because, you know, well, because like she's Kimberly <laughs> and everything. And, you know, like a lot of people had crushes on her back in the day and plus unbeknownst to the audience this was around the time the original three yellow red and black ranger left the show which made it for a very confusing thing when you watch it back in the day because like you see zach and everything and then you see trini a little bit but you never see jason jason is supposed to be missing because he is hanging out with his uncle so his fans are kind of like, okay, cool, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And But then some odd stuff started happening. So Zach is front and center because, you know, they film multiple episodes a day and then they do the voice work for ADR when they're in the suits. But of course, by this time, the original three had left. So the only footage you get to see is that of Zach and that of Trini, mostly that of Zach. But then when it gets to the voices, it's like, wait, who the heck are you? <laughs> And so it's Kimberly and it's Billy, and she's sad old Tommy. Cause Tommy has just now lost his powers, and she misses him as a ranger, and just misses him as a boyfriend, which is kind of weird that he just left the show up in like front. It's kind of like that never made no sense. Okay, he lost his powers. I get that, but why did he leave the show? <laughs> why did he leave his girlfriend? You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, around this time, Jason David Frank, may he rest in peace, he was going to do Cybertron, which would later become VR Troopers and stuff. And so when that fell through, he came on right on back to Mighty Morphin and stuff. And so she's reminiscing over a mirror that he got her for like the um, that he won for her. And so she sees this fortune teller and she wants to know Tommy's future. But Billy, being a logical person he is, he's all like, there's no such thing as like fortune tellers and stuff like that. But she goes anyway. So we get some stuff with Bulk and Skull. They want to go visit the fortune teller lady. They have no money. Um, she gives them a map. The map leads them to the juice bar where they get like a free muffin with a meal. They can't pay, so they have to wash dishes. So anyway. Goldar, he intercepts Kimberly. He and so there's no fight really, just her, some putties. She kicks one of the putties, and that's about it. Um, you know, she's not much of a mar martial artist, she's a gymnastic type person. So, you know, it wasn't going to get much of a fight scene with that, which really is a shame. And so he puts some like glittery dust on her, and she falls asleep. And so, like, when she wakes up, she is in a cave, and then he puts on her Rita's dress. And she looks amazing in Rita's dress. And so this is the one that the American footage, um, the American um, company people made, you know, because the original one was from the Japanese footage. So they had to remake Rita's dress, and they made it bigger and puffier. And they gave her a new scepter. Um, it's technically it's the old scepter. They just had to make it their own. And I always thought that was weird. Like, I always like, how come in season one, it's really thin and like, you know, really metallic looking and stuff and sharp. But then season two is all big and puffy and stuff and looks like foam. I can never understand why. <laughs> Because back then, I didn't really know it was all on Japanese footage and stuff like that, you know. And it's like scarf mugs, uh, my mugs, <laughs> scarf uh, marks on like the scepter and everything. Ah, uh, where's the call on quality control, man? I mean, let me look at the toys now, you know what I'm saying? I got a silver ranger with wobbly legs so there's no pins in them and stuff. And his silver silver riser ain't even painted correctly. I hate having to paint my toys. If I gotta spend about 30 something bucks on this thing, I expect it to be painted correctly. And so like, uh, let me get to the other rangers for now. And so like, you know, um, Billy and Zach, they're supposed to meet up with Curtis and that one dude who likes Trini, and they're supposed to go rollerblading. Man, 
man, I miss rollerblading to death. And so some putties show up um, at some point in time when Curtis and them are around, Kabili and them haven't showed up yet. And because they're in the command center, find out about Kimberly, so they have to go on over there. But this is why I really like Zach, the second in command, is taking control. That's how it's supposed to be. He's the Black Ranger, the Black Ranger second in control. So he orders Billy and Trini to go get Kimberly while he'll go help Curtis and them. And so those two morph and Zach doesn't. This is when Zach had his braids. So if he morphed, it would have looked weird because he would have had that flat top. And so like, it does make me wonder about once and always, who's going to be the leader? Because so far it looks like Billy is front and center. And Billy's not the leader, and so it technically should be either Zack or Rocky because they're the Black and Red Ranger. But most likely it's going to be Billy. I mean, he's the one who wrote. I mean, um, Dave, um, David Yost is the one who wrote it and came up with this concept. So most likely it's going to be him front and center. But it makes no logical sense in the term of like hierarchy. But hey, whatever. And so like. Everybody's fighting putty. Zach is like doing some really cool moves and everything on the swing sets. And so are like, you know, Curtis and the other dude. Now, the only reason why Curtis and the other dude was even brought in is to be decoys for um, who is the White Ranger and everything. And so like, but of course, after the White Ranger showed up to be Tommy, they got rid of those two characters. And those two characters disappeared when Trini and Zach left the show. And so now um, over in the cave area, we get like Billy and we get Trini morphed and everything and fighting putties. Their suits look completely different. They look shinier, which is weird because in the American footage, it's cotton and some type of cotton spandex. And now it looks like it's polyester to try to match with the silk of that of the Super Sentai. And while they're fighting this, I noticed something. Trini's voice sounds different. And I'm just like, who is this woman? <laughs> this woman does not sound like her. She sounds Asian, but I don't even know if that's a real Asian accent or not. <laughs> And so this is why I picked this episode. It has to do with the whole Kimberly. So when Kimberly wakes up, like I said before, she's put in Rita's outfit. And the thing about Kimberly is she is not the smartest person in the world. And she's the ultimate like valley girl who's all about fashion and saying like, like, so whatever and everything like that. And totally for sure <laughs> and stuff like that, you know, and she's not the toughest either when it comes to out of suits, like fighting. Yeah, she can fight and she can do gymnastics but her fighting was never as good as like some of the others because you know amy joe johnson doesn't know martial arts and of course like you know in the sentai she does some pretty cool moves but in the american stuff uh, she can like throw out some moves here and there and stuff and but the reason why i picked this episode is because kimberly uses her brain and she uses it pretty quickly the moment she's in rita's dress and goldar tells her what's up she quickly uses her brain to get out of this situation. She doesn't even have to be rescued by the other Rangers to tell you the truth. What she does is that she knows that all the Dominions hated Rita in her loud squeaky voice and her demanding bossing way. So what does she do? She starts to sound like Rita screaming and shouting and bossing them around. And it gets to the point where it just um, annoys them and scares them and everything. And to me, that is like one of the smartest things ever. She didn't even have to lay a fist on them. She just had to use her voice and her brain. And that's one of the smartest qualities ever in like a hero is if you can like get your opponent down, but just like using your brain, that's a whole lot better than beating the snot out of them and stuff. And so then of course the um, two rangers show up and they get like her morpher back and they get her and they all get out of there. And then of course she morphs with the dress on. And so now all of a sudden, because you know, Zed got pissed and everything, turned the mirror into a monster. This is the Sentai footage, but they can't show the Sentai rain on um, the Sentai um, people fighting the monster because they have different suits than the Power Rangers at this time. If only they would have changed suits, man. Like, I'm telling you. And so, like, now Jason and Zach have shown up, but they're morphed. 
And when they fight the putties again, because there's nothing they can do but fight putties <laughs> in season two, because they can't fight the monsters and stuff until Tommy shows up. Or unless they decide to fight in the um, suits that were sent over to them and stuff. We start to hear Jason talk, and it sounds like him. It sounds like recorded footage. It might be recorded audio from a long time ago, or it's just the new voice actor dude did a good job of mimicking his voice. Like, oh man, <laughs> something like that. That's basically what he always says, you know? And the uh, replacement dude always sounded similar to that of, you know, Austin and stuff. And so, like, Zach and Trini say absolutely nothing at this point when they're fighting the putties. But when they rescue Kimberly, the Trini replacement, you can so tell it's not her. You can tell it's not her. So of course they call the Megazord, they beat the monster, and then they head on back to the juice bar where Kimberly is still sad about Tommy, but now she's missing her mirror, but Curtis brings it back. And so, yeah, that's basically this entire episode. And this is, like I said before, this is why I picked it. I like the idea that Kimberly, of all people, used her brain, which is something she rarely ever does because she's not that bright. And, you know, Kimberly was always a cool ranger, you know. She's kind of like the life of the party, but not like a party girl type because this is a kid show, you know. And it's just like her valley girlness was always a highlight on the show that people just love. It made her different. It made her unique from the rest of the characters. And it made her somewhat relatable because it was the 90s and that's just how people were and how people talked at that time. Happy Women's History Month, everybody. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.